Let me read to you a passage from the first chapter of St. John's Gospel, verses 35 to 42. It's the Gospel for January the 4th, before the Epiphany. St. John writes, The next day, John stood with two of his disciples, watching Jesus walking. And he said, Behold the Lamb of God. The two disciples heard him speak, and they followed Jesus. Jesus turned, and seeing them following him, said to them, What do you seek? They said to him, Rabbi, which is to say, Master, where do you dwell? He said to them, Come and see. They came, saw where he was dwelling, and they stayed with him that day. It was about the tenth hour. Andrew, the brother of Simon Peter, was one of the two who had heard what John had said and had followed Jesus. He found his brother Simon and said to him, We have found the Messiah, which, interpreted, is the Christ. And he brought him to Jesus. And Jesus, looking upon him, said, You are Simon, the son of Jonah. You will be called Cephas, which translated is Peter. That's from John chapter 1, verses 35 to 42. It speaks of knowing Jesus. What do I mean? Well, you know, one of the obvious characteristics of the Gospel of St. John is the vivid detail of its descriptions. The author of the Gospel describes John the Baptist gazing at Jesus who was walking along and it was on the next day we read there is the scene Jesus is walking John is gazing at him with two of his disciples present near to him the Lamb of God John quietly says to his two disciples perhaps with a slight gesture pointing to Jesus while he gazes at him in rapt admiration. Jesus is not walking towards John as he was the day before, chapter 1, verse 29. He is simply walking. I suspect that the setting on this day was an address given by John to the crowds at the place of his baptisms. There may have been some baptisms, and now it was over. Jesus himself had already been baptized by John in the River Jordan, during which John had seen the Holy Spirit descend on him in the form of a dove. The day before our scene, today, John had referred to this descent of the Spirit, though not to the actual baptism, chapter 1, verse 32. So, let us imagine Jesus present on this day, listening to John, quietly preparing himself for the commencement of his public ministry. He was just one among the crowd, unobserved, silent, yet filled with the Holy Spirit and with the person of his Heavenly Father. The address was perhaps over, and John stood there with two of his disciples. People were leaving, and our Lord himself had got up and was walking, soon to go to his place of temporary abode. Ah! He was the one who filled the mind of John. Perhaps John had been watching him admiringly during his ministry to many others. He could scarcely think of anyone else. How he felt dwarfed by his holy relative before him, whose identity and mission had now been revealed to him. This was the Messiah, this Jesus, his own cousin. Of course he had known how utterly good he always was, but he had not known that he was the long-awaited one, the Messiah. And there he quietly walked in all his unassuming dignity, the Lamb. He would take away the sin of the world. It may be that with divine aid John had perceived that Jesus would do this as a Lamb for sacrifice as the suffering servant. The two disciples heard the heartfelt admiration and love 
that filled what John had just said of the man before them, before him. They looked, they gazed, and they were powerfully drawn. How beautiful the one they saw walking. He was filled with God, and John had instantly conveyed to them how much this man surpassed their own master. John seemed to be saying to them, Go, the blessing of all blessings is before you. Do not tarry. It is not mine to follow him physically, but why not you? He is the bridegroom. I am merely his friend, rejoiced to see and announce him. Go then. Thus drawn, the two followed, with eyes widened in godly expectation. The treasure of treasures was before them, walking ahead, alone, silent, calm, strong. They followed, humbled, humble, subdued, with eyes on the figure before them. He stopped, turned, and with simple friendliness asked them what they wanted. What were they seeking? Imagine their first glimpse of him, not side on, not from behind, but face to face. They saw his features, not realizing at the time that they were looking on God himself. This man was the very Son of God. He was the Word who had been with God from all eternity in divine glory. This man was the human face of God. He spoke and smiled. What are you looking for? They did not know it, but in him they had found all that they sought. God had created them and had created all men precisely to know, love and serve the man before them. St. Paul would write that before the foundation of the world, God chose us in Christ to be holy and full of love in his sight. He was the light of life for every man, and he had come into the world. They now beheld him. Rabbi, where do you live? They asked. Could we go with you? Could we be with you? May we be your companions? May we learn from you? May we be your disciples? Then came the wonderful reply which John the Evangelist would never forget. Come and see. They went with him and stayed with him the rest of that day. It is hard to think of anything more beautiful. They began to see his glory and came away knowing that they knew the Messiah himself. Their lives would never be the same. Life now consisted of a heartfelt friendship with Jesus of Nazareth. What happened to them is meant to happen to each of us. The church makes her own the words of John the Baptist and says to each one of us and to all within her hearing, there is the Lamb of God. Are we disposed to listen and to follow? It is up to us. We have heard the words and it is for us to take them to heart. We must follow Jesus, placing ourselves in his presence so as to hear him ask us what are you seeking? Let us ask from the depths of our hearts that we stay with him as his companions and let the whole of our lives be shaped by that friendship. Our eternity will depend on the depth of that friendship and on how we have brought that friendship to others.